Today is our ninth lecture, and uh, the title of the lecture today is on the characterization of Delene Mumford's decks. But before beginning, I just want to remind you where we're going in this course, we have one big goal, which is this theorem that's stated here. And uh, at least after today, what we'll We'll at least know that MG is at the Lean Mumford stack and we'll know it, uh, which is smooth over the integers. Um, and we'll know the, the a relative dimension, 3G minus three. So after today's lecture, we'll, we'll, we'll at least kind of have understand a piece of this theorem that uh, we, we still haven't introduced stable curves, so we can't talk about MG bar, but we'll know that at least MG is Delene Mumford and we'll know its dimension and we'll know it's smooth. And after today's lecture, this, what we, we'll, we'll basically cap the first half of this course where we've introduced uh, like sites, sheets, and stacks being the first part, and then the second part being, you know, development of uh, basic properties of algebraic spaces and stacks. Uh, on Wednesday, we'll move on to like the geometry of W. Mumford stacks. Probably just have two lectures with the main goal of of uh, introducing and, and showing the existence of the uh, of, of of a course moduli space. And and then and then we'll move on to the moduli stable curves and. But we'll see that like, oh, yeah, over the next few lectures, we'll be, be gradually chipping away at this theorem, establishing more and more properties about MG bar. So any, yeah, any questions before we begin? Right, but I, I do wanna remind you of, of what we did on, on Wednesday. We really introduced three new concepts about the uh, geometry of general algebraic stacks. There was the dimension, there was the tangent space, and there were residual gerbs. And I want to quickly just recap what those notions were. So the first notion was, was the dimension. And I have the kind of a formal definition here, but essentially the definition, uh, the, the dimension of an algebraic stack, I'll put this in quotes, uh, is you, you, well, you choose a presentation that's this u over x. And then the dimension is the dimension of the presentation minus the relative dimension of this morphism. And maybe to clarify by the relative dimension, you can think of this as the dimension of uh, a fiber, which is exactly what this uh, ru is here. And uh, it, the, the reason this, this, is, this works is it's well defined precisely because smooth morphisms are well be like is that dimension is, is well behaved with respect to smooth morphisms. So if you have a smooth morphism of schemes x to y, then then the dimension of X is the dimension of, of Y plus the dimension of a fiber where you have a point X going to Y. Uh, it, it's locally, essentially, yeah. I Maybe mean, I should say the, the dimension at X. And uh, yeah, and, and be, because the dimension is well behaved for smooth morphisms, we, we essentially extend, we, 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 we define the dimension for algebraic stacks so that this so that it's still well behaved with respect to smooth morphism. So this is this definition is forced upon us. So yeah, that 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 is dimension. And then we introduced the, the tangent space at a point. So if we fix uh, an algebraic stack and a K point, then the Zariski tangent space is is always to expend, extend uh, the field value point to a morphism from the dual numbers. This is just like with schemes. 
you can consider the tangent space of the scheme as maps from the dual numbers where the closed point goes to your fixed point. And then we mod out by isomorphisms. And the, the fact that we covered last time was that it, even though it, it might not be obvious from the definition that this is in fact a, a vector space. And we also saw the example of, uh, of we computed the tangent space of MG, right? If we consider just MG for a moment, maybe yeah, let's define it over a field uh, K. So this is MG yeah, defined over that, that fixed field. And we take a, a curve C, then infinitesimal deformation theory It implies that the tangent space, the tangent space of the stack MG at this curve C is identified with H1 of the tangent bundle. Uh, and we computed that this, that the, the dimension of this using Riemann rock was is 3G minus 3. Right, so we know the dimension of the tangent space of MG. We, we still don't know that it's smooth, but well, we haven't introduced smoothness yet. We'll, do, we'll, we'll cover that today. And then the third thing we covered was res residual gerbs. But before I, I remind you of that, I just want to introduce a clarification and a reminder of some of our definitions. First is that, well, uh, in, that we say an algebraic stack is quasi compact. If the so x if the underlying topological spaces. And this is equivalent to saying that there exists uh, a smooth presentation from an affine scheme. So this is a yeah, smooth presentation. And a morphism, so this is the definition I had done in, informally or incorrectly, is that a morphism is quasi-compact. You don't define it just on, on, on topological spaces, but you just require that for all base changes, like for all maps from an affine into the target, the base change is quasi-compact. Right. And then we also just to remind you, we also have we also also say that an algebraic stack is an Ethereum if one is locally an Ethereum uh, and you need quasi compactness assumptions for all diagonals. So you need that, that X is quasi compact, uh, the first diagonal is quasi compact, and the second diagonal. Are all quasi compact. Or, or, in other words, we're saying that, yeah, the stack is quasi compact and the diagonal is both quasi compact and quasi separated. And then the, the other definition, we, we were interested in uh, the analog of sort of the, the closed points for algebraic stacks. And we introduced the notion of a finite type point to, to provide that notion. That So we say that. A point in the topological space of an algebraic stack is finite type if there exists a representative so uh, a field mapping to that uh, so it's a representative of this point x which is such that this morphism is locally a finite type Again, and this local, yeah, this is the definite, now I'm following the stacks project, but in, in, in our case, or let me just point out that if, if X is an Ethereum, then the diagonal is quasi compact. And so a map like from a field, a field value point is locally a finite type, if and only if it's finite type. So this, this issue 
yeah, is irrelevant for us. Right, yeah, but uh, I guess, the, yeah, to take away from this is that we have this notion of finite type points. This is the, and, and you know, for a scheme, the finite type points are the locally closed points. And then we introduce the notion of a, yeah, of a residual gerb, which I've I get included formally here, uh, but maybe instead of reading this, I mean, just think of that essentially the residual gerb, which is uh, denoted by GX, the substack of X, and it should be the smallest substack containing the point containing X. Or in other words, we, we have a sort of a, a, a unique factorization of a field value point uh, as a as an epimorphism into the residual gerb followed by a monomorphism. And this satisfies kind of the corresponding universal property. All right, so this is sort of the analog for of a, of a the uh, of, of the inclusion of the the residue field into a scheme, and what we showed last time it took some work, but what we showed was this theorem on the right hand side was that if you have an Ethereum algebraic stack, and there's two important, really important hypotheses here, is that uh, I I take a finite type point and I assume that the stabilizer is smooth, and with these assumptions. Uh, we were able to show that the, the residual gerb is an algebraic stack, and moreover, that the inclusion is a locally closed immersion. And so this, is, this statement is true without these two hypotheses here, um, except that, you know, if, if you don't take a finite type point, the inclusion of the residual gerb will just be a monomorphism and won't be locally closed. Uh, but we were, we, 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 we were able to like, utilize this hypothesis of a smooth stabilizer um, because essentially, because we've we've defined stacks to have by by quotients of like of smooth presentations, and uh, if you wanted to relax this hypothesis, you 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 really need to develop uh, you need, need to be able to take quotients of like flat group voids and flat equivalence relations, and we're really not going there. So I'm 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 happy with this yeah with imposing this hypothesis, and you get an easier uh, an easier proof. And. Uh, Right, and so the, yeah, uh, that, and so this residual gerb has this property that if you base change by any smooth presentation, you get sort of the orbit of that point with respect to the uh, the orbit of that point in the induced group groupoid. So, for instance, if the stack X is a quotient stack, you know, in the case that if X is the quotient stack of say U mod some group G, then O of U is the normal orbit. Is like the the orbit of, of, of u under the g action, and then the, the fact that the residual gerb is locally closed is just echoing sort of this fact from equivariant geometry that the orbit of any closed point under an algebraic group action is locally closed. And um, sort of a side comment that's not so important, but the, yeah. I, I was going through the proof of this theorem again, and you know, I, I made this assertion. Yeah, you, you do not. Yeah, I, I I use the fact that algebraic spaces were sheaves in the FPPF topology to prove this, but you don't need that fact. It's because we're assuming smooth stabilizers, you can get away in, in making the entire argument in the smooth topology. Anyway, yeah, that's what we covered. And I want to say that's a quick recap. Sure. Can I ask a question? Sure. You have this uh, this triangle, this commutative triangle with spec k um, mm -hmm. into x, and then an epi and a mono. Mm -hmm. Is that that is a that is true? Like that is a true commutative triangle. Yes. And that uh, and it satisfies some kind of universal property. That yeah, I might forget which way the arrow goes, but if you have some other z here and a factorization of an epi and a monomorphism, I think it goes this way. Yeah, so it does satisfy that, that universal property. I mean, if 
if X is a sheaf, then this is the sheaf theoretic image. But the, so this is the, the uh, uh, like the stack theoretic factorization of, of this morphism. Cool, thanks. Are there other questions? Yes, I have another question. So sure. did we prove that uh, GX is uh, isomorphic to BGX last time? Oh yeah, last time uh, we made in the proof we made a further simplification that that our point uh, that our stack was say defined over a field and our point uh, our point was also defined over that field. In that case, it was like the and yeah maybe I'll point that case. I'll, I'll remind you here that if x is say is finite type over a field k and X is defined over that same field, then the residual gerb is classifying stack of the stabilizer. And in that case, it's like easy to see exactly what the inclusion is. All right. Thank you. Other questions? All right, so I'm going to move on to today's presentation. Uh, so I, I want to introduce, like, um, I would like to give an equivalent characterization of the lean Mumford stacks uh, with with the with the property that uh, you know we define the lean Mumford stacks in, by requiring that there's an etal presentation, and now we're going to just we're going to we're going to say that it's equivalent to just saying that the stabilizer groups are finite and reduced. Um, but actually, what I'd like to, to do is a, a, a more make a more general statement that uh, and prove the existence of special types of presentations. So here is one of the main theorems for today, and it's the existence of what I call miniversal presentations. So let me walk you through the the statement. Um, so we're, we're, yeah, we have an Ethereum algebraic stack, and we have a finite type point. And we assume for, yeah, that the stabilizer is smooth. Um, and maybe as a, as a small tech, technicality here, where like a point is like uh, not, it's just a, a point at the topological space. Uh, it's not, you can't really, to define the stabilizer associated to the point, you need to choose a field value representative of that point. But the, the, but the property of, of, its, of whether it's smooth or whether it's reduced or of its dimension is sort of independent of what representative you take. So I'm sort of requiring that for all representatives or equivalently for one representative, the stabilizer is smooth. But okay, if we have a smooth stabilizer, then there's a, then we're claiming that there's a smooth presentation. Um, well, we know because it's an algebraic stack, there exists a smooth presentation, but the important thing here is that we can arrange that there's a smooth presentation of such that the relative dimension is equal to the dimension of the stabilizer. And you get a Cartesian diagram like this, so that the, the fiber product under the residual gerb is just a point. And if you think about, if you apply this to the case where you have a point with a finite and reduced stabilizer, since this map then has relative dimension zero, it's, it's a tau. So you get an a tau morphism from a scheme. And this is what we'll use to then prove this uh, equivalent characterization for the lean Mumford stacks. And I'm, I'm calling it a mini versal presentation, but I haven't defined that. Uh, but let me, let me define it here. We say that a, 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 smooth, a smooth map is mini versal uh, at, say, maybe at a point u going to x if it induces an isomorphism on tangent spaces. So it's, it, in other words, it's a smooth presentation sort of of the smallest possible relative dimension. And uh, later, actually later, uh, we could do it now, but, but later we'll actually see
that uh, that the, the map from U to X from in the theorem is universal. We could do this now. I, I just it's just convenient to have the uh, to, to discuss the lifting criterion of, of smoothness when doing it, um, and we'll we we'll postpone that to the end of the lecture. Right, and uh, okay, but before showing this, I, I think, yeah, I'm a big fan of very simple examples. So let me tell you how this works out in, in an example. So let, let's take the scaling action of GM on the affine plane. And, uh, and note that, well, okay, that we, we, we do know that if you take A2 mod a2 mod gm, uh, and then if I look at the inclusion of the origin, yeah, you know, this is actually this is the this is the residual derb at zero, and if I take the fiber product, I, I get the origin, and so this is exactly the at, this is exactly the type of presentation that the, that the theorem is producing here. So yeah, this is. This, this map from A2 to the quotient stack is miniversal at zero. Um, but, but it's not miniversal elsewhere. Say at, at the point one, for instance. Or at the point, let me let me do it at the point whoop, zero comma one. Because if you take yeah, let's do this. Let's compute what the fiber product is. And like geometrically here, we have these two axes, and we're taking maybe our point to be here. Uh, zero one, um, and if you compute this fiber product over the inclusion, in this case, this point has no stabilizer, so the residual derb is just the, the the field spec k, and the fiber product is the orbit of this point under the scaling action. In this case, the orbit is just let's see, is the orbit is. Uh, the y-axis minus the origin. Now, this is just uh, zero comma y, where y is non-zero. And this has relative dimension uh, one. So that this is not miniversal at, at one, but, uh, but what, what you could do, so what we'd like is this, this is a smaller presentation around this point zero and one. And what you can do is you just can slice, you could just take a slice that's transverse to the orbit. In this case, I could just choose sort of the slice where I fix y equals one. And then if I if I consider the composition, where if I take and yeah, if I take the locus where y equals one, right? This is just a copy of the affine line, and I include y equals one into a two, and then I go into the quotient stack. This is miniversal. At one, but note what's happening here. This I mean, this is a really like silly example because if you throw away the origin in this quotient stack, you get you get p one. So what I've done is just give you the normal coordinates of of uh, of an a one inside of p one. So in this case, it's not only yeah, it's not even like this composition is not is. It is a tau, but in addition, it's also it's an open immersion. It's a local chart in Zariski topology. Maybe this was almost too too simple to illustrate the idea, but the, the general idea is of the proof that I'll show you now is you take an arbitrary you take an arbitrary presentation. The orbit may, might be positive dimensional, but you want to sort of slice generically through the orbit that in order to preserve preserve the smoothness. So let me give you this argument now.
So we begin by just choosing an arbitrary presentation. And we can, we, and then we form the fiber product. And let's let N be the relative dimension of this map U to X. And note that this has, this residual gerb has dimension equal to the negative of the dimension of the stabilizer. And so uh, that means that, yeah, if I take this co-dimension of, if I take N minus the dimension of the stabilizer, that, that, that gives me the dimension of the orbit. And right, if, if, if C equals zero, then this orbit is discrete. It's just a finite number of points. And, uh, and I could just throw away everything other than my one, my one chosen pre-image little U. So if C equals zero, uh, we win, but in the general case, we, we want to slice, uh, we want to find a slice transverse to the orbit. So maybe I'll just draw a picture down here. So here's my, my U, I might have a point here and I take its orbit and I, and I want to find a slice transverse to the orbit. Okay, so how, how do we do this? So we, we use a little algebra here. So let's first observe that, you know, this fiber product O of U is a scheme uh, and it's a smooth scheme of dimension C. So that, that, that means that there exists uh, a regular sequence, the F1 dot 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 FC in the maximal ideal at C inside this local ring. Oh, uh, oh, the orbit of U at U. Is a regular sequence and it, yeah, it's generating the maximal ideal. And then uh, after, like after shrinking U, we can lift these, I mean, we, this is uh, what we, we know that this is a locally closed immersion. Um, so after shrinking, you can arrange that to be a closed immersion and, and uh, you can then arrange U to be affine, and then you can lift these functions to U. So we can assume that F1 dot 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 FC are actually our global functions on U. And then we simply take, we, we define the closed subscheme defined, defined by these functions. And sort of by design, W intersects this orbit at this at this point, um, U. All right. So what we want to show is that when you when you then that that we need to show that W is flat over the stack X, or even smooth after the stack, uh, smooth over the stack. And to do that, we're going to use the local criterion for flatness. So we inductively apply, well, at least the following, yeah, there's many versions for the local criterion of flatness, but we'll apply this, this version here. So let's take a, a local ring homomorphism. Of 
local Mithrian rings. And let's let F be an element of the maximal ideal of B um, such that it's a non-zero divisor in the quotient, in the fiber, right? Like geometrically, I have spec B mapping to spec A, and this is representing the fiber of that map. And I have a global function on, on, uh, on, on the source that restricts to non-zero divisor on the fiber. And then the conclusion is that the composition A to B to B mod F is, is flat. Now, I guess I need to yet assume that, that this is flat to begin with. All right, but that, that, that is, that's exactly what we have. Um, that's exactly sort of we're in the situation that we could apply this. And note that it, really the only facts we're using about regular sequences that we need to use are, are one that sort of that the, the that the uh, that the maximal ideal of a regular local ring is generated by uh, a regular sequence whose length is equal to the dimension of the ring. In other words, that you know the depth of the ring is equal to the dimension of the ring. And then we we'll also need to use in order to yeah we also need to use that if you pull back a regular sequence along a smooth morphism, it remains a regular sequence. Um, and maybe to remind you, the definition of a regular sequence is that the first guy is a non-zero divisor. The second guy is a non-zero non divisor in the quotient of the first. The third is a non-zero divisor in the quotient of the first two and so on. So we're exactly in this situation uh, to apply this fact. And what it tells you so if, if, is, is if I take W inside U, over x that this that this map is then uh, this this flat uh, but we also know that the fiber of this we sort of arranged the fiber under the residual gerb to be exactly uh, the point we started with and this map is smooth and uh, so we have a, a flat morphism whose fiber is smooth, and therefore it's smooth in a neighborhood. And so we, we finish this. We finish the proof by just saying we just shrink uh, W maybe further to arrange that it's smooth. Right. Uh, yeah, and that completes the proof. I, I guess there are some details to check. And I mean, the main, the main detail is the, is the y is w flat over x. And the point is you, can ch you, you check this smooth locally and you, you apply the indu inductively the local criterion for flatness. Are there, are there questions on this? Is there a missing word in the fact after let f and m be such that f tensor one and b uh, tensor? Oh, I didn't write. Yeah, there should be a word. Right, yeah. Should be a non-zero such that. Uh, thank you. So this is an element inside here, and this needs to be a non-zero divisor. Where do I write that? Yeah, it needs to be a non-zero divisor. Also. How do you know that the dimension of GX is exactly minus the dimension of the stabilizer? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think I'm, yeah, I, I think, so in my notes, I've left that as, a, as an exercise. Uh, certainly, okay, in, 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 in the one case, I pr proved the existence of a residual, residual derb last time, where you have a stack of finite type over a field, uh, and then you have a, a, a rational point of it. So th there the residual derb is B of the stabilizer. In that case, it's clear that the dimension is minus the dimension of the stabilizer. Uh, in the other case, you have sort of, you could just show that, um, that you, well, I don't know what a minimal amount, uh, well, it is true that a a, like a tau, lo a tau locally, you can trivialize this, this gerb so it becomes B of the stabilizer. And, under a towel, 
a telemax preserved dimension. But there, there is, you are right that there, that it, yeah, there is, there, there are some details that I'm hiding here, and that is one of them. Okay, okay, thank you. Other questions? Right, and I think maybe in the proof you probably saw the importance. You know, we again use the fact that the stabilizer is smooth. Um, we had that hypothesis in the existence of residual gerbs, uh, but it also sort of came up here in a very essential way to get this to be a smooth presentation. Um, and I should point out that, you know, actually, as stated, this is not true without that hypothesis. So if you, if you have stabilizers that are like, like mu p's and characteristic p that are, uh, that are non reduced, you really have two choices. Either you can take a smooth presentation, um, and but yet then you will not be able to arrange that sort of minimal dimension, and that and that your fi yeah that your fiber is just a point. Or you could choose a flat presentation that has this that has this sort of like attic property. Right. Okay. So this is. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to tell you that some. Uh, well, the first consequence of this theorem is uh, is the following kind of characterization of the lean Mumford stacks. It's written down here. And so then let me explain. Uh, yeah, just like connect the dots here. Why this is true. So like uh, so, there's three equivalent conditions here. The first is that is Delene Mumford. Which remember the definition was that there's an atal presentation. Uh, two is that every point has a finite and reduced stabilizer group. And that three is that the diagonal is unramified. And the, equ the equivalence between two and three is, is formal. This is essentially the, de the definition of unramified. Or one of the equivalent definitions of unramified. So unramified is uh, locally a finite type. And here, well, we even have a Noetherian hypothesis, so that we know. And for any algebraic stack, the diagonal is, is always locally a finite type. But here, because the Noetherian is, we, we even have that it's finite type. Uh, but but once you have that locally a finite type hypothesis, the condition of being unramified is just checked on fibers. It just means that all fibers. Uh, are discrete and reduced. And uh, un unramified is also a property that's a tau local. So that uh, it's a tau local on the source and the target. So there's really, there, so that naturally extends to morphisms of the lean Mumford stacks. Um, Right, so the two and three are just uh, yeah, formally equivalent. And the theorem, uh, if we, the theorem gives us the direction that two implies one. This is the hard direction. If you have an arbitrary algebraic stack and just a, uh, and a point with a finite reduced stabilizer, you, you use the this theorem on the existence of universal deformations to find a, a presentation uh, which is a relative dimension, well, zero, so it's a tau. And the other direction is the easier one, but we haven't done it yet, so I just want to do it quickly. So why is it that delene Mumford stacks have finite and reduced stabilizers? Well, if X is dm, we know there exists a scheme U and an tau presentation. Right. And then uh, if we were trying to understand the properties of the diagonal, these pull back to properties of sort of the groupoid. We have this fiber diagram. And, uh, and we're trying to show that this is unramified. Yeah, is this, is this unramified? But we can take this composition either uh, under either projection, and then this is uh, either the source or the target, but it's certainly a tau. And 
and, and, we're and, and we're trying to show something about the fibers of this map. So that implies this is unramified because I mean, the fibers of R to U are unramified, are just are discrete. And the fibers of this map therefore sit, yeah, sit inside the fibers of that one. So this is just a form you get you get it for free through the existence of a tau presentations. And we could also give in a, a, uh, this other corollary, we can characterize algebraic spaces. So let's let X be an Ethereum DM stack. And then we want to claim that the following are equivalent. One is that, oh, and I, here I have to, let me impose a hypothesis that, an, uh, yeah, let's assume the diagonal of X is representable by schemes. Then the following are equivalent. One is that X is an algebraic space. Two is that every point has trivial stabilizer. And three is that the diagonal is a monomorphism. And this last property is like is is, cl is clearly equivalent to to requiring that x is equivalent to a sheaf. And uh, and yeah, and so it, and maybe uh, yeah again the connection between two and three here corresponds to yeah this corresponds to this fact that say like a, a group scheme finite type group scheme is trivial if and only if its fibers are trivial. So it, yeah, if, if you know all that, that so when I, and, and two, when I say every point has trivial stabilizer, I mean every field value point yeah, or every geometric point even. But if you, it, that is enough to know that the automorphism group of any like family of objects is trivial because you know what you get is some some group scheme defined over your base, but you know all the fibers are trivial, and it's this fact from algebraic group theory that tells you that, therefore your group scheme is trivial. Yeah, and uh, this is sort of an ugly hypothesis here that uh, we need because if, if you if you take this argument, what it gives you, we've sliced down the dimension. So if, if you take uh, like an Ethereum Deleme buffer stack with trivial stabilizer, what, what this existence of universal presentations theorem gives you is, is a scheme and then a tau morphism to your, to your sheaf, uh, but you only know that it's rep representable by algebraic spaces, not necessarily representable by schemes. And so that's why I've added this hypothesis so that we, yeah. It is true without this, but it requires a little more work um, and, and also like for our purposes, you know, we're interested in MG and MG bar. We've already shown that MG has affine diagonal. You know, so the diagonal is certainly representable by schemes. And later we'll even show that both MG and MG bar are separated. So they'll have finite diagonal. But on the other hand, from like a ph philosophical perspective, it's just good to know. I mean, you don't, you don't want this. It's good to know that the statement is true without this hypothesis because Otherwise, like if it, if it wasn't true, then we would, then we didn't have the right notion for an algebraic space. Like, because um, we define al algebraic spaces to be quotients of equivalence relations of schemes. Um, and then you would also hope that you could also take quotients of equivalence relations of algebraic spaces. So you don't need to build even a further category. And so it, it is true that algebraic spaces, you sort of are closed under taking equivalence relations and that um, yeah, and that this hypothesis is not necessary. But really, the upshot of this is, is that, yeah, we now have an, another characterization of Deleme upper stacks and, and algebraic spaces. Are there, yeah, I'll, I'll pause for questions. Is there any subtlety to, um, so the theorem is giving you a, a telemorphism around every point. Mm -hmm. um, but but you need a you need a full presentation. So 
Oh, is right. That subtlety to making it subjective. No, not, for us there isn't because we have an Ethereumist hypothesis. So that, um, so and uh, right, I, I think John's point was that we only have these presentations around finite type points. But if you have an Ethereum stack, these points are dense. So it, it suffices if you just take a presentation around the finite type points and then take like a disjoint union over all of them, um, it will surject. Yeah, I mean, yeah. All right, but now we get to the kind of a, a, a important application of this result. Um, and we're gonna apply it to, to MG. And so here's this basic fact about smooth curves is that they have finite uh, and reduced automorphism groups. So sort of a, a there's a number of arguments uh, where, yeah, a number of, of geometric arguments for this fact. The, the one that sort of fits nicely in line with other arguments I'm giving uh, is the following. So let me just sketch why this is true. Um, first, I guess it's, you, you do this in two part parts. First is that the automorphism group scheme uh, is an algebraic group. And here you, you use, to do this, you can use the Hilbert scheme to relate an automorphism of a curve to uh, you think about it as the closed subscheme of its graph. And so you can think about automorphisms as parameterizing certain types of closed subschemes of C cross C. And so this tells you that it's an algebraic group. And then, uh, and then inf inf infinitesimal deformation theory identifies the Lie algebra of this group. That is the tangent space at the identity of aught C with global sections of the tangent bundle. Um, and you just, and you compute this to be, because, because uh, this had, we're, we're, we're taking, okay, yeah, the, the genus has to be at least two for this to be even to be true. And that's the condition that implies that this, ha this tangent bundle has negative degree. So this has zero sections. And then we have now, so now we have an algebraic, an al we, know we have an algebraic group as like a, fi a finite type group scheme over a field. And we know that the tangent space at the identity is zero. And that tells you that it's, it's a reduced and finite group scheme. Right, so, so we get this corollary. Finally, we can conclude that MG is a Deleuze Mumford stack. And by our presentation, we also know it's finite type over Z. And to remind you, we also know that the diagonal is affine. Great. Yeah, any, any questions? Um, yeah, I have a question. So for any scheme over uh, another base scheme, are there any a useful set of conditions under which the automorphism group functor is uh, a group scheme over the base? Uh, I think... Uh... Oh, so you're asking like how generally is it true that if you take uh, an arbitrary morphism of schemes like this, then that you want to do like the, the, the yeah the automorphism group scheme as a functor over schemes, and you want to know when is this representable? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. On top of my head, I don't know that. Uh, uh, Yeah, I don't know the. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't want to say anything wrong. So yeah, <laughs> we, we, yeah. In our in our case, we, we can utilize that it's one dimensional to get a better description. Um, but in general, even if Y is a field and X is projective, we don't 
we don't have it necessarily. Uh, yeah. Well, certainly an algebraic group, right? Yeah, I guess it's certainly an algebraic group. If X is projective, yeah, then, no, hold on. I, I don't want to say anything wrong. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, if I was to give this up, yeah, if I was to give this a, a, a one minute of thought, I would have, some, I'm sure I could say something, but I don't want to say anything wrong. Okay. Because I put this on YouTube. If I wasn't putting this on YouTube, maybe we can, we can chat away. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, so the, the other two things I'd like to do today are to, are to discuss smoothness, uh, smoothness as well as yeah, properness. Um, yeah, so let's just get, get at it. So yeah, I'm gonna introduce uh, smoothness. So at first I should say uh, that uh, we do know what it makes, we, 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 we know what it means for a morphism of algebraic stacks to be smooth, because smoothness is a, is a, a property that's both smooth local on the source and the target. And so what we're after here is an equivalent characterization of smoothness that allows us to check it in practice, um, especially that will be especially relevant for moduli problems. And uh, so what I've written here is this theorem on the formal lifting criteria for smoothness. And hopefully, this is, is something that's familiar to you in the case of schemes. And my assertion here is that it's also true for, for algebraic stacks. And the, so we say that F is smooth. So we have some finiteness condition. And then the, the, uh, the, the formal lifting criterion says that whenever you have an, uh, a diagram like this, where uh, this is sort of a, an infinitesimal extension, that is defined, this, this is a surjection of rings and the, the kernel is nilpotent, then uh, there needs to exist a lifting. And what, 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 one reason why this is so nice is because it's, uh, yeah, it's sort of like a functorial criterion for, for smoothness. And anytime you have a functorial criterion for any morphisms in the context of moduli problems, that means you can just check it because it translates to some something about families of, of curves. But I did, but it, it is also because we're working with stacks, it's sort of important to be precise here. Uh, like every time we have a commutative diagram, there are two arrows. And so saying what a lifting means is, is indeed subtle. So I tried to snub, spell it out in this remark. So, uh, so I'll, I'll walk you through this. So a lifting of a two commutative diagram like that well, it's, it's first a morphism, spec A to X. Uh, but then you need to specify two isomorphisms because you have two, two new triangles here. So you have a beta and a gamma. And the, these three, so you have alpha, now you have an alpha, beta, and gamma, and they need to satisfy some natural uh, commutativity relation. And, uh, and this is basically the only one that could make sense. Right, and maybe even yet another way to describe this is uh, you could say that X, so X to Y smooth, if and only if for all diagrams like this, another way to say this lifting criterion is that you know, I, I need the following map to be essentially subjective. If you look at this map of categories, this is essentially surjective. Right, because if you, if you look over here, this, I have, I have an object of X over A naught, an object of Y over A, and then I have this, this two commutativity, which is giving me, uh, telling me, yeah, how I get an object of the fiber product of categories. Anyway, okay. But uh, we're going to skip the proof simply because we, I want to get to MG sooner rather than later. Uh, it, the, I think the proof is manageable, but yeah, it takes it does take some work. Uh, and I, I also wanted to mention 
that there's a similar criteria for, uh, for, for a tau morphisms and I'm ramified. Like a tau would be the equivalent to say that there exists a unique lifting. And the, the formal lifting criteria for unramified would be that there exists at most one. Yeah, so rather than, than going into any of the details of the proof, I'd rather like show you how you apply this. And what, we'll get to MG but uh, in a moment, but first I wanna revisit this notion of miniversal deformations now that we have uh, the formal lifting criterion. So we'll move on to this page. And so what I would like to show is, yeah, is the following proposition. So we've taken a theory and algebraic stack. Let's take uh, a finite type point with a smooth stabilizer. And suppose we have a Cartesian diagram. Suppose we have a presentation uh, where this is, is smooth and we have a point U going to X and we know that we're sort of in the situation that was produced by the theorem on existence of mini universal deformations that this pulls back to the inclusion of the residue field. Yeah, so, it, so suppose we have this Cartesian diagram. Uh, then the conclusion is that it's miniversal. Then the tangent space of U at U maps isomorphically to the tangent space of X at X. And this is as KU vector spaces. So I guess technically here, I mean, when I say the tangent space of X at X, I mean of the composition, maybe I shouldn't say of X, I should just say like of f of u, where f of u is the this is this sort of inclusion here. All right, and or or this and this was exactly our definition of universal. So in other words, u to x is universal at u. And so, uh, so we need to prove this. And if you think about what the formal lifting criterion says, just in the case of, of lifting uh, tangent vectors, like if you, if you just apply the lifting criterion when your closed immersion was a field into the dual numbers, and this is the inclusion of say U. So we're taking, I guess, K to be the residue field of U. The formal lifting criterion says that there are always are lists like this because this map is smooth. And what that means is that the tangent space of U is surjects onto the tangent space at, at, at X. Right? It, it's exactly saying I can lift tangent vectors. Uh, and we're using an easy version of this formal lift criterion. I mean, yeah, this map is, 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 is representable. Uh, and okay, so I owe you uh, injectivity. So let, let, yeah, let's suppose we have a tangent vector tau of u. So this is tangent vector of u at u. And suppose that under this map, it goes to zero. Well, what that means is, yeah, is that the, the, the composition is then the zero uh, tangent vector, which means that it's equivalent to just the, the trivial one, which is the include, yeah, it's just the, so which, which is the factorization that, that, that the tangent vector factors through spec K. And what that means is that it's just by the definition of the residual gerb, If you think about the composition 
this tangent vector with the present the map pat, map to x, we actually know that this map factors through spec k, so it, def, it factors through the residual term. And and therefore, um, if I add in, we know we know what the fiber product of, of this diagram was. That was spec of k of u. Like this is a Cartesian diagram here. And therefore, we get a tangent vector of the fiber product. Well, the fiber product is just a point, and so it has it, so it's trivial. So that it, this it tells you that your tangent vector is zero. And therefore, we get an isomorphism. Right, and the, the reason we're doing this is it was actually a question a, a few lectures ago, like uh, th this will allow us to, to compute tangent spaces of stacks because uh, if, you, if you can cook up a, uh, a, a mini-versal presentation, you know, as in the hypothesis here, this, that you can then compute the tangent space of the stack as a, by the tangent space of, of U. I think I might be a little confused, but it's not so. It's not true that this map u to x is atoll. So, like atoll isn't going to mean isomorphism on tangent spaces. Is that sort of right? In this case, somehow, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, right. Because these maps are only are only smooth. So it's it's. So it's not. Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't get for free that induces bijections on, on tangent spaces. Yeah, and but the, the the point is that even though yeah, like for instance, a one mod gm, the, this presentation is smooth of relative dimension one, but nevertheless, at the origin, it does induce a, a map of tangent spaces. It's sort of like it's sort of yeah. It's the fact that the stabilizer dimension is positive that's can canceling out the yeah the one dimensional stabilizer is canceling out the um, this yeah one dimensional thing. Does that make sense? I think so. Yeah. So can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. So um, the, the zero point uh, in uh, this question isn't just uh, uh, so GM over zero. So mm -hmm. And so the dungeon space uh, aren't just the deformation of gem that is uh, affine uh, and smooth. And uh, deformation in that case are always zero, right? So the dungeon space at the region of the space should be one dimensional, right? Yes. According to this. this one. Yes. But if I take, uh, um, yes. So the zero point is just uh, uh, the principal bundle of GM over zero that map to zero and uh, again to spec uh, C, for instance. I'm a little confused at what you're getting at here. Uh, may, yeah, I, yeah. Maybe, maybe isn't, uh, the, the next slide might, might be, I'm gonna spell out this connection between dimension and, of, of a stack and the dimension of the tangent space. So maybe, maybe this next slide will make things more clear. Thank okay. You. Yeah, please uh, hold, hold your question if this, if, if, if you, if it, yeah, if this doesn't clarify it. So I, I want to prove a corollary, which, so let's take a, a smooth, um, well, okay, let's take a Ethereum algebraic stack. And let's uh, let's assume that it's smooth over a field K. And let's take a K point. So, yeah, a K point with smooth stabilizer. This is this is a fine, in particular, a finite type point. Then the uh, and we're assuming that the stack is smooth. That's the key hypothesis here. Uh, then the dimension of x is the dimension of the tangent space minus the dimension of the stabilizer. Is 
And, and you could think like, maybe you should try to think about uh, this proof through this one example of A1 mapping to A1 mod GM, but we take, we take a mini versal presentation U to X. Um, this is the residual gerb. And we know that this has relative dimension. The relative dimension of this is equal to minus, oh no, is equal to the dimension of the stabilizer. And this, yeah, so therefore we get that the, we just compute that the dimension at X of the stack is by, sort of by definition of dimension, this is the dimension of U minus the relative dimension. But the point is that because X is smooth, I mean, so is U, everything is smooth over the, uh, the field. So this is the same as the dimension uh, of the tangent space of u at u. And in turn, we've shown that uh, this, with this presentation that there's an identification of these two tangent spaces. So this just, this gives it to us. And okay, uh, right. And this allows us, finally, we get to the application we've been aiming at, which is MG. So I want to show that MG over spec Z is smooth of relative dimension 3G minus 3. Again, with the G is greater than or equal to 2. And we sort of, we want to translate, let's, let's translate the smoothness condition. We'll, we'll use the formal lifting criteria. And what it says is that, okay, we have a diagram like this. This is FG, this is spec Z. And where we want to know if we can lift it. Um, and Okay, I, I didn't dwell on this later, but it, it suffices to assume uh, in the form of lifting criterion that A and A naught are local rings. You can even assume that they're Artinian. But, in, uh, but I, I, then if I, I can restrict, since they're local, I can restrict to the residue field. And so then I get a field value point of MG. Let's call that C defined over that field K. And we can even assume, let's even assume that they're not only local rings, but they're Artinian. And you can even assume that the, the kernel of this surjection is, is K. Otherwise you could factor it as a bunch of these. So this is what you call like a small extension of Artinian rings. Uh, and so, you know, so, that, so if you then translate what this, this diagram into what it means with family of curves is that uh, so on one hand, I have C over my field and I have a given, given family over spec A0, A, A so C0. And I'm asking whether I can extend it over spec A1. So the, the, the existence of this family C is the same as the existence of a dotted arrow filling in this diagram, right? Just by how we how we've set things up. And uh, again, I'll just quote this fact from infinitesimal deformation theory, which just says that there is a cohomology class called ob in H two of C T C such that uh, is zero if and only if, uh, if there is a family of curves extending.
All right, so that finishes using infinitesimal deformation theory. Oh, and the fact that we're on a curve, that's the whole point. I need to, the H2 of C of the tangent bubble is always zero because C is one dimensional. So the obstruction always vanishes. So you can always lift. So we verified the formal lifting criterion and therefore MG is smooth over spec Z. Uh, right, and, uh, and we've also computed uh, okay, I've lost space here, but I'll do it just in the side here. We also like, I mean, to, to, to compute the relative dimension is three, three D minus three. We just need to compute the dimension of a fiber and uh, for a field K, uh, the, the, the corollary tells us that the dimension of MG restricted to this field K uh, at any at for at any curve c is equal to the dimension of the tangent space of mg at k of c and we've computed that to be 3g minus 3 earlier All right so we have yeah so that finishes the smoothness uh, and i only have one more slide and i'll go quickly here even though there's a, there's a lot to say uh, and I just wanted to give the analogous value to the criterion for properness. So in the last few minutes, let us let me just ex explain this. <laughs> uh, but we, yeah, so I, I, we wanted to find properness because we, we, wanted, we want to show, eventually we, we want to introduce and show that NG bar is, is, is a proper delete Mumford stack. Uh, but before we get there, we first need to introduce what properness means and we need to be careful introducing uh, properness. So I, I sort of gr like gradually on the left-hand side introduce, you know, separatedness and properness in more and more general uh, settings. Uh, and so, uh, right, so we, we first define the, the one notion that's easy to define is universally closed. And you say a morphism is universally closed if, uh, if every base change is a, induces a closed map on topological spaces. This is just like with schemes. Um, and then we, we define a representable morphism to be separated uh, if the diagonal is proper. So this is sort of like a recursive definition. We want to define separatedness using the, the diagonal being proper, but we haven't defined properness. So we restrict here to representable morphisms because then we know that the diagonal is representable by schemes. And so we know what it means to be proper. So, and then we define representable morphism to be proper. Um, if it's universally closed, separated in a finite type. Uh, and then bootstrapping that, we can define arbitrary morphisms to be separated and proper in, in a similar way. Jared, can I ask, uh, do you want to motivate why that definition of separatedness is a reasonable one? Uh, well, I, I, yeah, maybe I should say, uh, yeah, because like if, when you define separatedness for schemes, you require that the diagonal is a, is a closed immersion. So you might think that that's the, the natural generalization, but uh, with schemes, the diagonal is always a monomorphism. So, so saying that the, so for schemes, let me I'll even point that if X is a scheme, the diagonal is a, uh, is a closed immersion. If and only if it's, if it's proper. And so if you took the definition that like, uh, if, you took, if you took the closed immersion as, as a definition, then like the, for instance, like uh, BG of a finite group would not be proper because the diagonal, yeah, the diagonal is, is not a monomorphism. Uh, so yeah, so properness is, is a better notion than closed immersion once you drop the, uh, once your diagonal is no longer a monomorphism. Is, is that getting it to what to what you wanted, Robbie? That's reasonable. You, you, I might then ask why finite morphism. I mean, if, what uh, I, I have to pay attention. Does finite morphism also pass your test of a plausible depth, like the of the, the oh. diagonal is finite? I, 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 or I mean, why does it deserve the name separatedness? I guess is the question. Certainly, this oh. does generalize the notion of separatedness. But why this? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. So requiring the diagonal is finite is also an option. Um, 
I mean, yeah, what is, mm, yeah, well, yeah, how should we define, what should separatedness be? Like, is, you know, should, should the classifying stack of an elliptic curve be separated? Uh, well, maybe in some sense, it's this theorem that validates it because it satisfies the, the valid criterion for separatedness. That's a good reason. Uh, yeah, and, and the other, I don't, I'm not, uh, the other thing is properness, I feel like we have a sense of what we want it to mean. Um, but, oh, I guess, hmm. Right, so, so we, we want, we have a notion what we want proper to mean, at least in some sense. And so the wrong definition of separated would give the wrong definition of proper, but I guess finite would still give a reasonable definition. Yeah, finite would give a reasonable definition and for our purposes, it will be enough because one of the first things we'll show with MD bar, well, we'll show that the diagonal is finite. Um, and so it is, it, it is separated. Uh, so I take it. I take it the reason two and three here aren't uh, circular is that uh, in two proper is defined with respect to the representation by schemes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little subtle. That in, in, yeah, that you have to bootstrap the definition in the right way. Um, but I guess the, the upshot is that in the end, what we get is. It, is this value for criterion for universally closeness, properness, and separateness exactly like schemes that, you know, that, uh, well, I shouldn't say exactly like, uh, like for instance, in the universally closed part uh, in number one here, and, and likewise for properness, you can't just say there exists, you have to allow for a finite extension of your valuation rings. Uh, and we'll see in the argument for like, when we do stable reduction for MG bar, we'll see in the proof, like we'll be forced to, to take ex extensions in order to, to show it. Uh, and that these, these value continuous discussions can get very technical because there's a lot of equivalent ways to formulate it. Here, I've sort of done everything in, in the most general case with respect to valuation rings. But in practice, it's nice to know that you can check them on, on DBRs or even special types of DBRs. And so I, I made this assertion on the bottom that, you know, for finite type morphisms of Nathurians, algebraic stacks, you can just check on DBRs. And actually, just like with the formal lifting criterion for smoothness, in fact, like, like in, uh, one of the main motivations for these statements is that it allows you to check these criterion for moduli problems. But in fact, this is the easy direction of these theorems. And the, yeah, the, 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 the easier directions of those theorems. But, but, but we, will, we will actually use both directions as well, because you know, once you have that the moduli space is is smooth or, or proper, we, we can then utilize the value criterions and geometric arguments. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm sort of assuming here that you've seen that these value criterion in the cases of schemes. Otherwise, I mean, you, you, you probably can't get much out of here because like, it's, it's really a beautiful criterion that like, and if you, well, maybe I'll just end by saying this, that, you know, valuation rings and discrete valuation rings are the analog of curves. So it's, uh, so this is like, if you look at this criterion here, um, you know, we, we've, we've used spec of capital K as a puncture disc, right? Spec R is a curve with, with one closed point. If you remove that closed point, you get spec K. And so this is really about extend, extending objects uh, from, a, from a puncture disc to the entire disc. Um, and, uh, Right, and, and it'll take us some work, but we'll later be able to use this criterion to show that MG bar is, is proper. Maybe I'll end the recording now and we can then have, have questions.